Definitely a much more comfortable map for Terran than uh, Zerg, I have to say. The yep. positioning is also pretty wonky on this map, much like Catalina. And you guys got just got a very nice shot there of the crowd. There are actually so many people outside of that shot that you got. A very, very big crowd here today for day number two of the SSL. Yeah, well, I mean, you know what next game is? It's, it's Life versus Flash. What a match. That's one of the best matches oh, you yeah. could ask for in or outside Korea. And that's just the round of 32. That is that's, the round of 32. That's, like, unbelievable, actually. That is how stacked the SSL is. That it is, man. These two guys very talkative in between the games. You know, some guys, they don't talk at all. They just say, okay, GG, let's go, you know? But these two guys, pretty friendly with each other. Yeah, they seem to be, like, more around the same age sort of group. And uh, both, uh, oh, especially Sol, are very charismatic. He's actually a big fan favorite outside of Korea because he is that really friendly kid. Yeah. Gotta love Solar, and people are going to love Dream after this series as well. Looks like we're about ready to jump into set number four here on Foxtrot Labs between Dream and Solar. Let's get into it. Up here in the top left in the red, the Zerg player, it is Solar. There he is. Still has to win two more games in a row to take this match away from Dream. And yep. in the bottom right, it is the player. On match point, it is Dream. Yep. Dream was looking very comfortable after those two wins. Uh, took him pretty easily. I mean, that Catalina game, he was holding on there for a, a bit there in the mid game. He just barely held on to that fourth base. But, I mean, that was the fourth base. And if you were able to hold on to that with 3 3. Usually going to come ahead as the Terran in that point of the game and uh, was able to take that. But uh, now I feel like with Solar actually grabbing that win, it, it definitely is anybody's game. We saw, you know, two players come from behind O2 yesterday. Uh, it, it's not that uncommon of a thing to happen. It, it's, it, it's hard, yeah, it but people of, do it all the time. It does seem like the bit of the trend of SSL so far. We are seeing uh, a lot of uh, comebacks down two games. But, I mean, a uh, comeback on this map is going to be pretty difficult, as you can see. Just look at the map layout, uh, specifically for Zerg, when you get that fourth base, because the fourth is going to be in such awkward positions that Terran can take full advantage of with positioning and aggression early on. So it is one thing to look out for, and I'm sure Dream is going to be banking on that, getting in these positions. And we are most likely going to be seeing that Reaper, uh, Reaper opening once again, because there is that nice little back door into the, uh, into the Zerg base. Yeah. It's got that lip or that chin or whatever we want to call it. Got the uni brow to get into the back. <laughs> It's going to help out a lot uh, with uh, scouting everything and, and doing the damage he wants to. Do you think Solar could mix it up here a little bit at all? Just try to maybe put on a bit more aggression, not allow Dream to really get those comfortable three or four bases? Because well, like you were saying, it is a bit awkward for the Zerg to take four bases on this map. Is there mm -hmm. anything Solar can really do to counteract that outside of just trying to defend? Well, you can always take the, the kind of the life X esque style of going just Ling Bane very early on, trying to catch those Hellions out and just trying to end the game. We saw him do that a lot recently, which can do fantastic work. But, uh, I mean, Solar also found a fantastic timing uh, in the last game. Where it was just before, you know, like, Burrowing Claws was done. Uh, drilling Claws, sorry. And uh, just before the fourth base was up, you know, there's a lot of things that were still going for Dream that Dream wanted to get, get happening or finish before he started making that push out. Again, we're seeing this Pei Pei Sing Sing Sing, which is lose, lose, win, win, win. <laughs> So he's, he's the person responsible for uh, for making this happen every single day. That so guy is cursing he is the cursing. guy who's going up 2-0 no, every single time. He's making it fantastic for everyone to watch at home. And we all seen that Reaper get in. And almost getting a drone. Yeah, those links popping out right in time. Yeah, the links are out a little bit later because he did come for the gas before pull. Going to get that zone speed just a little bit faster, but you know, it exposes those drones for an extra few seconds. Yep. Well, the Queen is about to pop here. Should be okay to defend against this Reaper. Just got to save as many lings as possible. He's lost one so far. Hmm. Just applying pressure where he can. Yep. This time, Dream once again. He wants to put on the pressure with the Reapers on this yeah. map, as he did on Catalina. He's going up to three Reapers once again. Hmm, I like that. I, I wonder if we are going to see him. Ooh, actually. Oh, so close oh, to God. losing. 4 HP on that uh, on that Reaper. Very, very lucky escape there. And I wonder if we are going to see him maybe transition to Hellbats this time. 
We could see him go for the the, uh, the Hellion Banshee last time. And it, it did a little bit of work, but didn't really find enough. And I feel like if we had, if we had have seen uh, Hellbats instead, we could have seen a lot more. Yep, very true. Trying to Ooh. poke down that queen. I think he will be able to get it there. He does, but he yeah. does sacrifice one of his Reapers for it. Really committing for that kill, but you know, you get rid of that queen, you stop the uh, creep spread, which is a big deal. That it is. Now only one queen here at the front. Gonna have to remake one of those queens, and the Hellion production has started once again. Going straight into that starport. Probably gonna put on that pressure with the Banshee's Dream. Hasn't mixed it up so far. Hasn't and, mixed it up uh, yet. Yeah. Solar just putting on some pressure here at the front. Still no uh, tech lab for the barracks. Finally puts it down. Starport's gonna finish before that tech lab there, so a uh, little bit of a mistake there, I think. Yep, timing's just a bit off here, it seems. Which, you know, can make all the difference sometimes in these pro games. Gotta be careful It'll about be all that. All it takes, well, that's all it takes, man. Yeah. Well, here we go. Finally getting the switch here. Does he commit to Cloak once again? Yes, he does. Yes, he I, does. I would not expect anything different out of this guy. He's been uh, pretty readable so far in the series. Yeah, unhappy with his last game. Obviously, he wants to try the same sort of style. It's going to be up to him to deny that Overlord once again. We did see an Overlord go in. And I think he essentially saw... He saw the third CC, which is probably the biggest part of the scout that you want to scout. So you know it's not going to be a two-base timing with Hellbats or anything like that. You know it's going to go a little bit later. And the kind of uh, aggression from the Terran will not be the same. Yeah. Still going for that Bane Nest and a pretty good wall at the front there with the two Evo, Evo Chambers. Just wants to be safe. He knows that still a lot of Hellions can push in. And he does need to block it. He's got that three green wall to fill up that hole. Yeah, we are seeing some spores go down as well. So, so far, it seems like Solar kind of, you know, getting used to Dream style. He's like, okay, you're going to do the same thing here, you know. Now the spores come down, you know, it's, it's pretty easy here mm. to just uh, read what Dream is doing. The first Banshee is out here. Yeah, Solar kind of figuring things out. Uh, it seems to be a lot more comfortable against this style than the Hellbat style. The wait and see. Actually, we do see that armory added, sorry, so... Just maybe we'll, we will actually will see Hellbats be added. And looking at what exactly we have from Solar right now, I think it could do a lot of damage. We don't see any banlings whatsoever. Yeah, not yet. Uh, he's... I don't think he's really read this as well. You know, you were saying he saw that third CC coming down, and maybe he was just like, oh, okay, I have some time here. And here we go. Some are being added, but here comes the Hellbats. And if they jump on top of these banlings before they finish... And oh, I man. think he might. He's going to start focusing them down no, very, very quickly. No spore here at the front as well. And that Cloak Banshee already getting a lot of damage onto the Queen. One just gets transfused here. The Bailing hits have to be really nice here. Ooh. Only able to kill one of the Hellbats, though. Yeah, not good. And these Queens are getting lower and lower. He's going to start to focus down this spore. And if he can give the, the, uh, the Banshee, like, the natural, then things go very, very poorly for Sola very, very quickly. And already that Banshee getting to work on the drones at the third base. And the second Banshee coming in here as well with even more energy. Has to be careful not to fly into that Spore Crawler, though. He can actually start taking work on the, uh, making work on the Evos as well, which is going to help out a lot. Give him a nice uh, upgrade advantage if he wants. Or, or he can just, just start picking off Zerglings, you know, getting rid of that army count. He could do whatever he wants. He's really got some nice control here with the Banshee so far. No cancel there on the Extractor. Yeah, he's in a, this is a much, much better position, a much better timing from Dream. He realized that the Hellbats were the key to uh, giving him those first two wins. Yeah. Adding them again, but uh, losing a Banshee now. Got to be careful of a counterattack, but he does have a Banshee in position, as well as uh, four potential Hellbats. Yeah, Dream's looking really, really good in this game so far. I mean, if, if you just look at worker counts right now, they're even. So far in all of the other games, even when Dream was putting on some pressure with the Hellbats, Solar was up like 20 drones or something. This time it is not quite the case. He's had that third CC for so long, and he did a lot of damage. Mm. Now he's going to fly that out. It's going to be pretty easily taken here. He is floating a, a bunch of minerals here, but I'm sure he's, he's going straight take... for the gold as well. He's going to take full advantage of this map. And as we see, look at where that fourth base is, Valdez. Look at that. Look how close <laughs> it is to the third base. Yeah, it's uh, it's quite far out there, huh? How close to the third base is it of Dream? It's like, it's such a fantastic uh, map for Terran in these positions. They can uh, apply so much pressure, and they can apply it from the high ground just next to that third base. Yeah. So it's very, very difficult map for Zerg. 
Solar definitely on the back foot here. It's not really looking good for him. If he can get some really good engagements, possibly he can come back in this game. But like you were saying, the odds are stacked against him so far. He'll probably try for another timing like we did see last game. It did a lot of work. I mean, Dream obviously wants to go for a bit, bit of a later composition with the Drilling Claws upgrade. With that, a lot of Thors added on and that 3-3 in a decent time. But it's, uh, it's about finding that window. Because if a Terran is just turtling and holding on and having in, in a kind of a very, very strong position, it's nearly impossible to break. Yeah. The one thing that Solar does have going for him, he did get those Evo Chambers very soon. And his upgrades are actually ahead of Dream, so... You will have that 2-2 two, two, two sooner than Dream could uh, work out here. If Solar does time it, maybe do that big timing attack, that big push with the 2-2 two, two finish. Could definitely be an option. We're going to have to wait and see when Dream exactly wants to uh, kind of start making his move on the map. And there comes those Drilling Claws. Yeah, I mean, he's basically already in position here at the third base, you know, right outside of his own third base. Or I guess the fourth base, I should say, of Solar. I mean, look how hard that is. There's a widow mine like in the little uh, little nook the little up the nook top up there. there on the cliff. Oh, it's such a hard engagement. He has to come from a lot of different ways. He cannot really afford to go from one way because it will just be too cost inefficient. Yeah. We are seeing a great counter attack with these bailings, which can actually do a lot of work. Only one marine in this bunker. Again, we are seeing from from uh, from Dream and ooh, burrowed bailings. I believe that was very nicely done there. Could be. Well, trying to make something happen is Solar here. He wants to get some damage done, but like you were saying, the Creeper's not even spread up here on top of the cliff, so it's going to be even that much harder to engage up there. And Dream is just doing a very nice job here, clearing the creep even more and just doing the slow push here. Solar trying to go for a counterattack here, actually, with the Mutas. Yeah. Trying to find a little nook here at the main base. He's trying, and he sent a big Ling run by as well towards the fourth base of uh, what Dream will have. He's going to get that very, very comfortably. There's actually no creep spread on that fourth base, which is a little bit of a mistake there from Solar. Even though he has an overload there, he just has to press G on it. Yeah. And he will. You might get a little bit of creep down. Nope, nothing. No. And whoa, look at the fifth base positioning from Solar. <laughs> that is that is ambitious, to say the least. And here we go, Solar getting in position. But Drilling Claws Ooh. has been upgraded. That would mind hit not the best, but he's got a bunch more where that came from up there on top of the cliff. And if Solar wants to engage here, he has to be so careful. Yeah, he's got to come from multiple ways to kind of deal with this, I think. He cannot be just going up one ramp. Not with this many Widow Mines. A Thor that kind of absorb and a lot of Marauders. Such a hard Unicom position to deal with with uh, Mutaling Bane. But getting to anything later in the game is, is so difficult as well. And here we go. Bailing's kind of getting baited out with a couple of attacks. And Solar in a horrible position. Really, really bad here. Dream doing a very nice job with the Marauders in the front. Tanking so many of the Banelings hit here. Picking oh. up the Thor once again. Oh, so much damage being done oh from these Widow Mines. And that could not have been more cost efficient for Dream. Nearly losing nothing for those Widow Mine hits. And once again, his production is so close to this fourth base. He's just uh, reinforcing, uh, reinforcing so easily here. Solar is going to try to push in once again. But the Widow Mine hits are good again. Oh, they are perfect. And he's, he's got nothing else, man. He's got some mutas. He does have some units in the back. But this fourth base is in really, really dire straits right now. He could actually possibly even focus that down. Force Solar into a bad attack here. Solar's going to come in once again with the Beanlings, but they do get hit by the Widow Mines once again. Ooh, nice little clean up there. We are seeing from Solar. He's kind of starting to Ooh. clean everything up, which will give him a little bit of momentum and maybe give him enough to uh, kind of start counterattacking. He's going to try and save that last Thor, but... Medivac gets to, uh, focused down. And now, you know what? That, that goal base is kind of exposed. We are seeing a nice burrow there with the Widow Mines. Cleaning up a lot more. Yeah, one nice hit there. One of them did go down before going off. And a little bit of an overextension from Dream, I think. And he still hasn't actually got that fourth base up because of a nice counterattack with the Ling Bane. Yeah, and Solar, he does have that fifth base up and running now. It doesn't seem like he has too much saturation down there. But again, somehow in the midst of all of this, Solar was able to get that Hive up, and he's got 3-3 on the way here as well. Pretty much at the same timing as Dream. A little bit behind, I believe, but still in a pretty good position here. Yeah, I mean, he bought enough time with kind of destroying that force of Dreams where maybe, just maybe, he can get out that 3-3. And even some Ultras, if he can get to them in time, would really help out so much. And still, Solar's uh, fifth base has not been found by Dream, which is a massive blessing, i got to say, because that is so exposed. Dream could just deal with that, like, at a whim's notice. Like, yeah. he could just 
send a medivac over there, and he's going to. He'll find it whether on purpose or by accident. Well, Solar's looking to actually cut this off here, but he does miss it. Is he actually going to miss that? Oh, Hit base as well. Oh, big man. Big mine hit. Very big widow mine hit here. A lot of those meet is pretty low. As you guys do see there, a lot of red and yellow ones. Uh, more widow mines. Kind of getting picked off, actually. Bit of a mistake there from Dream, not paying attention. And here we go. The siege of the new fifth base. Yeah. If Dream can get rid of this, then they're going to be in the same sort of uh, same number of bases. And we do see Dream still being a little bit more cost efficient. Yeah. Dream is like, oh, okay, I need to take this out right now. He's immediately putting on the pressure here. But Solar trying to go for a nice counter attack here. Oh. Not the best. I have to say that Widowmine hit was very, very nice. Yeah, huge Widowmine hit. But this Solar? Marauders have had so much. Solar continuing the pressure here. A lot of lanes here. Drilling Claws does go down. Is the Widowmine hit good? It actually doesn't get off. The Mute is coming from the left side as well. But so much Zerg here, actually. Once again, he does have a lot of uh, really great Thormiker here. But still, the Banelings are rolling in. Yeah, you know what? It might actually be enough for Sol to kind of overrun this third base. More and more Lings, uh, no Banelings though. So more reinforcements from Dream are going to help really clean this up. No Widow Mines either. Two more coming down the ramp. Yeah. The Mutas, though, they all stay alive, and they were very, very key in that fight, doing a lot of damage once they did clean up the Thors. The 3-3 three, three here of Solar is about to finish, and he's going to be on even footing of Dream and going to be feeling pretty good about his chances here. Yeah, Dream finally starting to transition to that fifth CC. So he's finally going to try and become an uneven uh, economy once again. And uh, no Ultralisk being added from Solar just yet. He's staying on that Mutaling Bane. He has been taking much better engagements this game. And he has been finding the angles that he needs. But here we go once again. Dream pushing the issue. He does have that Thor and some great Widowmine placement. Trying to engage from two sides once again. But Dream oh. has some really nice placement with the Widowmines, like you were mentioning. And the Thors. One on both ramps. But again, the Widow, uh, rather the Mutas, following up from the back. And the Banelings over here getting some really nice hits. Yeah, you know what? Once again, we see Sola clean this up. But it wasn't the cleanest sort of... Uh, Cleanest sort of engagement. He had to go down a ramp where the lot of Widow Mines were waiting for it. And I think Sola can just keep pressing the issue once a few more Marines and another Thor comes along. That he can. But again, Dream, he, he doesn't want that fifth base to stay up. But at the same time, he can't really pressure it too much. So he's pretty much resigned to getting his own fifth base here. We'll clean up that Zergling that was blocking. Just. These uh, links that also have uh, Adrenaline upgrades. So they're a... Uh, they're going to do a lot, uh, very, very well against this buyer. And actually be a real threat against the buyer from now on. And we are seeing a nice counterattack with more lings. There is no defense here except that one weakened Marine and instantly a lift from the CC. I actually think we need to see more Widow Mines being made by, uh, by Dream at this point. Yeah. He's just not having enough to really clean up everything he needs. He's actually going to focus down that fifth base. Very nicely done. And look where that Thor is making it so difficult for the Link Bane to get down the ramp. Ooh, and the Widow Mine hits once again. Very good here. Are there enough links to clean up? It doesn't really so. look like it. Look oh. at the reinforcements coming in here, actually. Solar, I feel like, again, pushing a bit too far here. Yeah, everything's starting to get cleaned up. Still, Dream cannot overcommit like he did on that fourth base. Just wait a little bit longer, get a few more mines, maybe one or two more Thors, and he should be in a very, very cost-efficient sort of engagement once again. Widow Mine cleans up a lot of Zerglings. Solar in a very, very awkward position. He's going to try and have a great engagement. Ooh, it's going to be very hard to get the Widowmine hits. Widowmine hits not the greatest, but still a lot of Terran here. And the Zerg supply is falling rapidly. He doesn't have the best mineral income right now. He's trying to take this other fifth base on the high ground, but that's going to be cleaned up as well here. And Dream is taking control of this game once again. The positioning on this map just makes it so, so difficult for Zerg to get a, like a, a, a very clean engagement as we saw. Like Thor's constantly sitting on that ramp. Yeah. Widow Mine's below the ramp. And GG Solar Pretty taps brutal. Out. Yeah. I have to say, well, Dream, he does take the win here. Three to one. Does lose one set here, but very, very strong play from our new SKT Terran. Yeah, looking absolutely fantastic in the matchup, and uh, very unfortunate for Solar. Uh, it, you know what? It, it's just a, a very, very difficult map to play on. Uh, this these season maps. Yeah. Um, yeah. Foxtrot not the best. Catalina not the best, and uh, yeah, it's unfortunate for Solar, but still looking fantastic. A very great game to finish it off on, and uh, we got plenty more games today, Valdez.
that we do. Um, you know, one thing we did talk about once again, Dream was able to watch all of the games of Solar last night at the fight before Christmas there. And uh, he definitely seemed to have his number in this series. He played extremely well, extremely solid throughout the series, but also uh, very well adapted to the style of Solar. Uh, he did lose one game to a pretty aggressive push there on merry go but that was about it. That was about it, yeah. And going back to that Hellbat style in game four, and, you know, it kind of just did enough uh, did enough damage, kind of forced out enough Zerglings and Banelings to really warrant it, and then slowed down Solar's transition into the fourth base. Well, guys, we are going into an interview here between uh, Dream. 네, so, let's see what he has to say. 이렇게 해서 세트 스코어 3대 1로 조준혁 선수가 승리를 거두셨습니다. 축하드립니다, 조준혁 선수. 네, 감사합니다. Congratulations on your victory here, Dream. You're getting good results after you switched to the team of SK Telecom. How do you feel about your win today? I'm very happy that I'm getting good results after switching teams. And I'm very happy that I'm in the main tournament of the Star League. 좋은 자극이 되지 않았나 싶은데 팀 내에서 어떤 선수가 가장 많은 도움을 주고 있을까요? 어, 우선 Who is the most helpful person on your team? 있고, 네, 신영이 형이 되게 안 알려주는 스타일이라서 네. 뒤에서 몰래 몰래 보면서 Innovation 배우고. teaches him a lot. 아, 진로 배우고 계시는구나. 네. 네 그리고 또 But 오늘 경기 내내 doesn't quite teach him in words. More so, Dream is just watching Innovation play all day long and picking up a lot of stuff from those games. It's been a long time since I've played in the Nexon Arena, but I wasn't that nervous playing today. And the setting was very good for me today, so my micro was on point for the entire day. That it looked it. That it did. I'm very good friends with Solar. And he actually teased me. Uh, when he qualified, saying, how did you get this far? So he's very happy that he won today against Solar. <laughs> so that is the end of the interview there between Dream. And I have to say, he uh, definitely deserved that win. Uh, he whatever did. he's doing, watching Innovation with the popcorn, watching Solar with the popcorn, he's watching oh, a lot of games, and yeah. it's definitely helping him out here. Well, I wish I could do that. It, it just helps so much to sit down and watch someone like Sulky or Sue just play their games. Oh, like, yeah. You just learn so much. Well, guys, we are going to go to a quick break here between the next uh, set, so stay tuned.